Hey guys, what's up? This is Tom Fountainhead back again here in my home studio in Berlin with another episode for Fountainhead TV. And today it's a special episode for two reasons. First of all, in this video, I'm going to show you the tools and methods that are being used right now in the guitar community to either artificially enhance or just downright fake guitar performances either on recordings or in playthrough videos. And on top of that, I have a special guest. So say hello to my good friend and superhuman guitar phenomenon, Mr. Kevin Heidels. So if you've never heard Kevin's playing before, let me just say that, in my opinion, he is one of the best in the world right now when it comes to super clean, super fast and precise metal guitar playing, especially rhythm guitar. And like me, Kevin has gained a reputation for doing these one take guitar videos, meaning that we both will be playing very often a song from start to finish in one take with no overdubs and none of the post-processing that we will be showing you guys in this very video today. So the guitar community in the last couple of years has become increasingly competitive, even more so than in the past. And that correlates with the advent of the playthrough video, which is now the number one promotional tool for guitar players to promote themselves on social media. And now everybody's basically trying to outdo everybody else again in terms of speed, technicality, precision. So it's just like in the 80s, but now it's more about who has the most intimidating and slick looking playthrough video to their name. So there's a little bit of an open secret about playthrough videos in general, and that is that 99% of them do not feature the same performance in the audio than they are featuring in the video. And the reason for that is simple. It just takes an awful lot of time and dedication to be able to do that. Because the standards of production, especially in modern metal, have increased so much over the years that what you will be hearing on a mixed, mastered and released album will often be recorded in millions of different takes. It will be edited, it will be quantized to a grid, it will be re -amped, it will be post-processed in all kinds of ways to give you that hyper-precise, hyper-clean and even almost mechanical feel that people are apparently gravitating towards in, in the metal industry. And now, to be able to reproduce that as an instrumentalist in a live recording, especially if you're playing all the way through a song, without mistakes, without any kind of inconsistency, that is very, very hard to do. And it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of takes. So both Kevin and I um, are kind of being poster boys for doing this the old school way, live in front of a camera in one take. And we can both testify to the fact that it takes on average between 30 and 100 takes of a song, especially if, or sometimes even more, if it's very demanding material. So it will take you a lot of time and in your life to be able to just produce one of those live guitar playthroughs if you want your playthroughs to compete with the you know finished products of other artists that are out there. So most people don't go to the, these lengths, right? And you can't really blame them because not everybody has the time and the opportunity to just perfect one take, uh, one guitar performance of one song for weeks and weeks until you got that one perfect, if there is even such a thing, take that you upload. And so what happens in most of these cases is that you will be using the studio tracks of your band of um, you know which is mixed and mastered and processed and put out and you'll be for lack of better words miming uh, your guitar performance on video to that or sometimes people sit down in their home studios and they recreate the guitar track in their DAWs and they will still be recording it in separate takes for each part and they will be maybe using editing and quantizing uh, and all kinds of post -pro processing to make this guitar track sound as good as the studio version. And then they will sit down in front of the camera and um, mime to that. And this is just a re reality. And even Kevin and I have been doing that in the past in some cases, because you don't always have the time and the energy and the opportunity to 
do that with every single song that you're learning and that you're performing. It's just impossible. But on the other hand, you do have people on social media out there who are miraculously uploading several guitar performance videos or playful videos of that kind a week. And they will all look pristine. They will be uh, giving you a level of precision and um, clarity and consistency in the guitar playing that is almost supernatural. And you are, can't help but ask yourself, how are they doing that? Are they really better than anybody else out there? Are they really those amazing gods on their instruments? Or is there some kind of trickery going on? And unfortunately, the answer is a lot of times there is. So this is what we are going to dive into right now. Kevin is going to play a riff and a lead guitar part. And we're, I'm going to record him in Cubase. And then I'm going to post-process his guitar takes. So then we can um, compare the real thing with the artificially enhanced version. <laughs> All right, so right off the bat, we have to make one thing clear that even though we're talking about one of the top metal rhythm guitar players here, when you listen to the track that we just recorded, you can hear you can hear string noise, you can hear a little bit of um, accidental noise when Kevin is changing positions and his hands move across the string. And now if, if we look at the waveform, the blue one here is the DI track, then we can see that even though he's in time, that not all of these notes and these attacks are perfectly on the grid. As you can see, some is, some is a little bit uh, laid back, and then another one will be right on the money, and then some will be a little bit before. That's just, that's not Kevin playing badly. That's just the reality of a human performance. And these little flaws are actually what gives um, a, a guitar performance its life, its human element. It doesn't sound as exciting if all of that is gone. Um, that just as a random remark. So, as you can see, all the notes are a little bit different in timing and uh, in velocity. And we are going to listen to the part again once more. <laughs> And another thing that we can notice here is that this riff mixes various techniques. So several positions are being played. There's uh, open notes, there's palm muted notes, there's down picking, there's alternate picking, there's a little bit of legato. And so mixing all of these techniques together also creates a little bit of up and down. And you can see it in the waveform as well. If, uh, if we zoom in, To this part right here, you can see that the velocity is not as high as some of the other attack notes. And that's just another fact of guitar playing that depending on which string you are playing, depending on where you are on the neck, that the notes will just sound differently and have different qualities and different velocities to it. And then again, alternate picking will have a stronger downstroke and a weaker upstroke and all of these little details that are important to make a guitar performance a guitar performance. So now here's step number two. And this is where things get really interesting because now Kevin is going to play the same part again, but at half the speed. So here goes. Cool. 
cool. Now that we got our track in half speed, let's do the following. We will copy the tracks and then I'll be time stretching the entire part. So I'm setting it to 50% that will make it run at the exact same node value and tempo that Kevin originally played it at. So now we listen to the Kemper profile, so the amp track being played back at 50% speed. <laughs> Even though we now have a very <laughs> precise and rhythmically accurate guitar track, uh, it doesn't sound very convincing because the musical material in an amp track in a real mic'd up guitar recording is very complex. There's lots of overtones, distortion, and um, it's not gonna sound very much like the real thing if you speed it up, especially since I didn't use the most high quality um, time stretching algorithm. So you always get that weird chip monkey sound with it. But now, when I switch to the uh, DI track with the neural DSP plugin on it, let's see what happens there. <laughs> Okay, so that is a lot more like something that you would hear out there in the real world. Because now, even though it is time stretched, <clears throat> the time stretching happened on the DI track, which is um, sonically a lot less complex. And when we feed that back into like an amp plug and like the neural DSP, then a lot of those little. Um, glitches and a lot of those little giveaways for a sped up guitar track will just be lost in the way that the plugin is feeding it through distortion and saturation and all of those things. And if we look at the waveform now, we can see how without any editing, the all of the timing discrepancies from one note to the next, they are almost non-existent you know it, it actually is like a perfect guitar performance where it's not 100% on the grid but it's very very close it's inhumanly tight all right so here's another way to do that and it's quantization so what I'm doing is I'm gonna copy the track once more go to our DI track and now the copy track will be quantized to eight notes and the Q button. Right. So if we zoom in, we can clearly see the slight difference in timing here. Now every note is perfectly on the grid. Like that first one where Kevin was super slightly early is now starting perfectly on one. All right, so let's see how that sounds. All right, so far so good. I mean, it's definitely not as exciting anymore and as lifelike as it used to be, but um, we definitely have a 100% on the grid performance on our hands now. And there's not that many artifacts and sound that we have. There's a little bit of that um, because it is time stretched. But I feel that in a full mix, chances are with several guitars on top of each other, chances are that you won't be able to notice that very much. So here's one more attempt at fakery for you guys. So I took the same riff and I programmed it into Guitar Pro, which looks like this. And 
Now I exported the MIDI into Cubase. So this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it has super robotic on the grid timing and the velocity is very robotic as well. So this is like the cheapest version ever of, of doing this. But what we're doing is we are sending it into the same archetype Nolly preset that we used before. And this is what it sounds like. Okay, obviously this being um, just the first random guitar DI or muted guitar sound here in Hellion Sonic. Um, you can take this a lot further if you wanted to. I mean, by now there's even guitar specific program guitar VSTs on the market who give you a very um, realistic sound and you can tweak the presets and you can basically have it play all your licks for you and ch chances are that people won't even notice. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sync up the different post-process versions that we just came up with to Kevin's original performance of the riff at full speed and then you guys get to see how each of those versions line up with his physical movements. Cool, so Kevin and I have one more example for you, so you get to hear the effect that this kind of post-processing has on different musical material and different techniques. So the next one is going to be a lead guitar part using tapping, legato, and a little bit of vibrato at the end. And again, if you know which song it is and which part Kevin's playing, leave it in the comments below. And since we've already taken you through the entire process once, let's just make this a quick one, and I'm going to play you the clip of Kevin playing the original take several times. In the first one, you're going to hear the original audio take. And then from the second one onwards, it will be the post-process versions synced up with the original take. So again, ask yourself afterwards, would you have been able to tell that this is not a real human performance if you didn't know how it was done? All right, guys, this is it. Kevin and I are signing off for today. This has been fun. And most of all, I hope this was educational for you guys out there. And if it was, do like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts. Um, let us know what you want to see next. And subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Kevin's channel. You know the drill. So take care. Peace. Have a good night. Bye-bye.